anti government protest. Let's get up to speed on this now and talk to Khalil El Mazouk, a Bahraini Shia politician and former member of the Council of Representatives of the Lower House of the country's parliament on the line from Bahrain. Hi there, thanks for being with us. Um, first of all, how much effect generally will the banning of the Islamic Action Party have on the opposition movement? Actually, the more repression and the more uh, confiscation of the people, universal rights for uh, expression and freedom of assembly, the more people tend to be determined to change or to have a radical change in the political system. The political system in Bahrain has now been very much exposed how the ruling family, which is very minor uh, elements of the families of the Bahrainis uh, community, is controlling the uh, executive branch, the judicial branch, the legislative branch, uh, security branch, everything of this country. And the, the way that they are acting with the people is that they are oppressing these people once they oppose them. So it's not going to uh, make people retreat. Uh, rather than uh, make people more active into uh, uh, op opposing this regime and changing this political system. Khalil, I gather you represent Bahrain's leading opposition party, the, the WIFAC, and the authorities threatened to close your party down last year. Why are the Bahraini rulers apparently so worried about the opposition in these days? Uh, the, the regime, the political system is uh, very weak because it's, you, uh, it cannot debate uh, why we don't move into democracy and why don't we let the people to be part of the uh, authorities. Uh, that's why they are trying to pull people from uh, political uh, battle into security and sectarian battle. And one of the active uh, societies which we don't have political parties is al uh, so that they are threatened by their political movement, they are threatened by their international recognition because they are moderate and they are calling for democracy, they are calling for human rights respect, and universal, universal rights. So that's why they are trying to uh, confiscate their movement and trying to repress all activists, like you said, Nabir Rajab and others, and the Amal Society, and specifically al Wufaq, just to try to push people backward, not to allow them to move ahead with the political, uh, political change. And of course it begs the question, uh, doesn't it, with clashes between demonstrators and police in your country almost daily and tear gas being regularly used, you know, are we anywhere near an Arrow Spring style uprising there? This is the strategy of the authorities here. Uh, during February and March, the uh, marches were the most peaceful marches in the Arabs, o overall Arab Spring, uh, and uh, the police tried to push uh, the people back to their houses and try to follow them to their residential area and try to uh, uh, crush them with the excessive use of tear gas and toxic gases as well as shotguns and not, not allow them to even come to men roads. This creates some frustration within the uh, youth community. Although uh, another side is that the international community is not paying enough attention uh, to what's happening to Bahrain and supporting the democracy movements into Bahrain and giving it very low priority and continue dealing with the regime as business as usual. So this created some frustration. Uh, people wanted to defend themselves. We are against violence from any part, even from the demonstrators. But this is the tactics that the authorities use, as I said, to pull uh, the situation from political uh, uh, battle into security battle. All right, thanks for your thoughts and uh, explaining that a bit better to us. Khalil al Mazouk, former member of the Lower House of Bahrain in Parliament. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you. Now, let me bring up today.